Hello, welcome to today's lecture on deep learning, which has the topic attention pooling by similarity. We will today look at different functions that measure the similarity between keys and queries, and we will use it to introduce the Nadaraya Watson regression model. So let's look into it. So how do we measure attention by similarity? Well, these so-called Nadaraya Watson estimators that use so-called kernel functions to measure similarity look as follows. So a kernel alpha that takes a query and a key might, for example, be the so-called Gaussian kernel. Now the Gaussian kernel computes the exponential function of minus one half times the difference between the query and the key squared norm. So let's visualize this. If this here is our query and this here is our key, then q minus k would be this vector here. And thus, if q and k lie close together, this will have a small norm, whereas if they are far apart, this will have a large norm. Now we take this norm, we square it, and multiply it by minus one half. That means that if this here is close to zero, we would take the exponential function of a small negative number. And if this is large, we would take the exponential function of a large negative number. How does the exponential function look? Well, basically, if we take a negative number, that basically means that we're computing something like 1 divided by e to one half q minus k squared. So if this number here is large, then e to the power of a large number becomes a very large number, an even larger number. So one divided by this very large number goes to zero. And on the other hand, if q minus k is a vector that has a very small norm, so if q and k lie very close together, then, well, we're taking 1 divided by e to the power of something that goes to 0, e to the power of 0 is 1. get that for small norms of this difference vector q minus k. So we observe that this Gaussian kernel is in the range between 0 and 1, and it is 0 for a query and a key that are far apart, and goes to 1 if they are very similar or identical. A second of these kernels is the so-called boxcar kernel. Well, this boxcar kernel becomes 1 if the norm is small. And how small? Well, if it lies within the unit ball. So if q and k query and 
key are close together, then this becomes 1, and otherwise 0. And another kernel function would be the max of 0 and 1 minus the norm of this difference vector. So that would also be 0 if the norm of this vector is large, because then this will go negative and the maximum will be 0. And for the difference between these two vectors being small, then this goes to 1. So these are three different functions that assign a value of 1 for queries and keys that are similar and 0 for queries and keys that are far apart. Just different ways to compute something between a 0 and a 1 for the queries and the keys. Yeah? Here you have it using this exponential function. Here you just have two different values depending on um, whether this query and key, the difference vector, the norm of that lies beyond the threshold, one in this case here, could, but, but could also be a different threshold. And in the other case, you're computing max of zero and one minus the norm of this difference. So there are many more of these different kernel functions. Now these particular kernel functions have the property that they're both translation and rotation invariant. That means that if you take these two vectors and you rotate them, well, then the norm of this different vector wouldn't change because they're all based on the norm. You're just rotating this vector. Now, if you move both k and q somewhere else, so if you add a third vector to it, also, this difference vector wouldn't change in norm because you basically would add this translation and you would subtract it again if you apply it to both Q and K. So shifting and rotating both K and Q in the same way wouldn't affect the values that are computed by these kernels. And yeah, we see that we have defined different kernels and that they somehow translate these, this norm of this different vector to, in a different way to larger or smaller values. And it is really that the um, choice of these kernels and how they do it and how they compute it defines notions of range and smoothness that we want to get for our similarity function here. For example, this boxcar kernel, because it only gives you two different values, one or zero, would attend to observations within a distance of one, but it wouldn't really make a difference between any of these as soon as it is within this distance, and it would not attend at all to any vectors that are outside, versus a Gaussian would really smoothly um, reduce the attention based the further apart the distance goes. So we have now defined different kernels, different of these attention pooling functions that measure similarity between key and query vectors. The Nadaraya Watson estimator would now use those to compute a function that based on a query vector is the sum over all the values that are associated to those keys. So it would compute our kernel between our query and all our keys that are in our database and would compute a weighted sum of the corresponding values. So if alpha, this similarity kernel, is large, 
then it would weigh it up in this weighted sum. And if it's small or zero, it would weigh it down or ignore it completely. And then this is normalized by the sum of these attention weights of the, all the kernels over all whole data set or database. Now this can be used for regression if our values are the labels, the regression labels. How can I think about this? Well, in this case, our keys would be the inputs, the input vectors x, and y would be our regression label, and the query would be the, the new location where I want to evaluate my function. Uh, might be not completely clear in the beginning, but let's visualize it for a one-dimensional function. So here we have our input dimension x, and we want to regress y. Now we have n pairs of inputs x and y values. So this would be, for example, x1, and here we have y1. We might have another one here, we might have another one here, we might have another one here, and here, and here. Say we have one more here. Now we place a query somewhere here, for example. That would be Q. And what do we do now? Well, we are computing now for each of those Xi's, if this is um, X1 y1, this here is x2, y2, x3, y3, x4, y4, and so on, up to xn, yn, we would compute alpha for this query and all of our data points. Now, all our kernels, they would assign large attention to the keys that are close. So our keys are x. So it would assign small attention to this one, small attention to this. So the kernel would go to what's zero. So they would get zeroed out in this sum here. But very large attention to these. And now what are we computing? Well, we are computing this weighted sum of the values. And we said that the values are the corresponding y values that are here. Now what happens if we compute this weighted sum and we weigh down this one, we weigh down this one, we weigh a little bit up this one, but we put most attention on these two here and say we ignore most of these others. Well, then if these two points receive almost all of our attention, that means that we're basically computing a weighted average over these two. So our predicted y value, so this here would be q comma f of q, where f of q is our predicted y. So I can think of this as y hat being computed as f of q. So you're computing a new label, regression label, based on the query, which is a location in x. So it's basically the place in x where we want to evaluate this function. Now we can do that also, of course, for a different q, say this is our q2, this is q1. Then what would happen? Well, we would again evaluate for this q the kernel to all of our data points here, and we would in this case ignore all the ones that are far away from this Q and assign more attention to the ones that are close here. And which one is the closest one? Well, the closest one is this one. 
right? So this would get a large weight and this one would get a much smaller weight already. So we would compute basically a weighted sum of these data points here where all of these are ignored because the kernel goes to zero. And we might end up computing this function here. So this would be Q2 comma F of Q2. Where this prediction is now weighted sum of all those y values here where we weigh up the y values of the data points that are close to our query. So this is how we can use this for regression. Of course, we can not only do that in one dimensional x, but we can do that also for very high dimensional x. Where the only thing that differs is how you compute the kernel function or this similarity attention weight. Similarly, you could also use it for classification. So for classification, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have a continuous output y, but rather our yi would be a class label. For example, using one hot encoding. In this case, you would you could basically computing a weighted sum of different one-hot encoded vectors. So you will get, what will you get out of that? You will get out a new vector that has values that are all between 0 and 1. Because it's an average over these binary vectors, these one-hot encoded vectors. And now you can interpret these values between 0 and 1 that are this weighted average as the probability for each class based on the similarity of the inputs x, where the inputs that are most similar to our query location would receive the largest weight. So the class probabilities for those similar points would be the highest in this weighted average. So let's quickly summarize this short detour into Nadaraya Watson regression. It is a kernel regression that uses basically an early precursor of current attention. And it can be directly used with little to no training. So we didn't have any weight matrices or so that we need to fit. The only thing that we need to be able to do is to evaluate our attention, similarity attention function or kernel between our query locations or test data point, the x of our test data point with the keys, which are the x values of our training data set. Now it might be that the kernel, so this attention function, might have some tunable parameters that you might want to fit. But otherwise, this model has no parameters. You're basically just then computing a prediction as a weighted average over the output values, which might be regression, so basically a continuous number, or class labels based on one-hot encoded um, outputs of our training data. And the attention in this case is assigned according to the similarity or the distance between our query location and our key. And with this, I want to say thank you and bye-bye. See you next time.